YouTube, my name is What Can I Change? Today we're going to talk about an individual who's going to tell us about, her name is Mrs. Melman, and she's going to talk about, you know, just the sports and what's going on with women in the Title IX and having um, there be fairness when it comes to sports and letting biological men in. All right, let's get it. I'm Mae Mailman, Senior Fellow with the Independent Women's Law Center, the legal advocacy arm of Independent Women's Forum and Independent Women's Voice. I am also a mother to my eight-month-old daughter. I am testifying here today in support of her future, her freedom, and her equal opportunity. My fellow panelists have covered the pernicious effects of gender ideology on children and their futures. I'm here to address another way in which gender ideology destroys women and girls, and that is by dissolving legal protections for women in athletics. Until recently, female student athletes might have thought that they were protected by Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972, and they were. That's because Title IX is very simple. It prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in programs run by schools that accept federal money, and that's basically all of them and those programs include sports. Title IX recognizes that providing equal opportunity for the sexes can mean recognizing inherent differences between the sexes. That's why the Title IX statute explicitly allows schools to provide different living arrangements for the sexes. So too in sports. In introducing Title IX, Senator Birch Bay explained that Title IX would not require sticking women on men's football teams. And that's why Congress explicitly asked that the initial Title IX regulations include reasonable provisions considering the nature of particular sports. And so for 50 years, the Title IX athletics regulation has explicitly permitted sex-based teams where selections for such teams is based on competitive skill or involves a contact sport. Importantly, the regulations also require that schools must provide equal opportunities for members of both sexes. Unfortunately, in April of this year, the Department of Education proposed a rule that, if adopted, would flip Title IX on its head. The proposed rule would modify the athletic regulation to let schools uh, compete on teams consistent with their gender identity unless a particular school can demonstrate to the satisfaction of the Department of Education that this policy would be too unfair or unsafe. In other words, women are no longer granted female sports teams as a given. We have to prove that we need it. Of course, we do need it. Studies show that even testosterone suppression cannot eliminate the male advantage. Except schools are not going to be allowed to say that as a general matter, post-pubescent biological males playing women's sports puts female athletes at risk of injury and losing playing time, medals, and privacy. No, schools are going to have to prove to federal bureaucrats that allowing a biological male on a woman's team would be unfair or unsafe in this particular sport with respect to these particular athletes. No school is going to want to take on that litigation risk, and so schools are going to allow biological males to compete on women's sports. This will directly and overwhelmingly harm female athletes who are far more likely to be displaced by a male athlete than vice versa, and far more likely to face risks in private spaces like locker rooms. And even if it were a good idea to reduce educational opportunities for women like this, the Department of Education may not do so unless this body has authorized it, but Congress has done no such thing. The Department of Education says that the Supreme Court's decision in Bostick versus Clayton County means it can pretend that Title IX addresses gender identity, but the Department of Education is wrong. In Bostick, the Supreme Court said that Title VII of the Civil Rights Act prohibits employers from firing someone just because they are transgender. The decision says that an employee's sex is not relevant to the selection, evaluation, or compensation of employees. Athletics and education, however, is governed by a different law, Title IX. And when it comes to athletics, sex is not only relevant, it is often dispositive. As superstar Serena Williams said, men's and women's tennis are completely different sports. We live in a nation of laws and not bureaucratic command 
That means the Department of Education must find its authorities in the laws that this legislative body has considered and passed. It may not use gender ideology to twist a simple anti-discrimination statute into a statute that reduces opportunities for women. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mailman. Now, my opinion on this is obvious. Um, I clearly think that biological men should not be in the sports, but I do like that she brought up Title Seven as well as Title Nine, because it is important to understand that there are things out there that say you cannot go against somebody because they're transgender. You can't fire somebody, just do it based off of that. But when it comes to athletics, it's a completely different law, a completely different life. Because when you start to put biological men into a female sport, what you're going to end up happening is having biological men dominate and the females will have no place to go. This is the whole reason Title IX was really pushed together in the first place, because they knew women and men were going to be so different that it'd be almost impossible for a woman to succeed in a man's sport unless they were given their own category to be able to compete. And look at how much this has helped women. Look at how many great female athletes that we have. Do you think those females would have ever had any chance that they had to play against other men? Would there be some women who came out on top depending on the sport? Yes. But in vast majority of sports, in the vast majority of cases, it would have always been men coming on top because these athletic feats, men are just, they just have the bone structure. They have this, um, the lung capacity. They have bigger bodies. They have more muscular frames. They'd be able to do this. So it just, it just doesn't make any sense to me to why we would ever start saying that by, if we ever tried to do this nationwide to allow them to be into these sports, it would be dominated by men pretty much telling little girls and little, yeah, pretty much telling little girls that you have no shot because if you're going to have to compete against little boys who decide that they want to be a girl, you're done. And it's never going to be fair to you. It's not your fault. It's not that you don't work hard. It's not that you're necessarily inferior. It's just that we are different. We were born different. And that's okay. Well, I think these things that want biological men and women to come in together is to keep pushing this narrative that men and women are both equal and shrink and everything. I remember having a conversation at work one day and I was talking to, and this is how deep it really goes that it doesn't make any sense. I was talking to a couple females who had never done powerlifting in their life. I have done powerlifting and I was talking to them saying, you know, some reason we got on the conversation of the strongest woman versus the strongest man. And I was talking about, there's a pretty big gap. It's not like it's close. It's not like the woman is five pounds away from being close to the strongest man. Right. And I said, the, it's never going to happen that way. The strongest woman is never going to be stronger than the strongest man. And they said, no, I think women can be stronger than men. And I was like, no, they cannot. If you compare the strongest man to the strongest woman, there's always going to be a gap. It's not, it's not going to like get, so it's not going to be like, oh, the strongest woman can overtake the strongest man and it's just going to go back and forth and volley because a woman would have to take so many drugs and have to get so big. I mean, her, her body would probably give out before she could even get to that because a man already has the physical advantage to begin with. And if they both start taking drugs to get to that place, the, the man is, like I said, already has the advantage. But see what I think women hear when I say stuff like that or they hear other men say stuff like that or hear other women say, oh, yeah, the man, the strongest man is probably is going to be. Uh, stronger than the strongest woman right the strongest power lift there is a man the strongest weight lift there is a man they hear that and hear oh y'all are inferior respect us get on your knees and praise us that's not what we're saying we're saying that the strongest power lift there is a man and the strongest uh, uh weight lift there is a man right that's all we're saying it doesn't matter because if you're the strongest female, you're the best female athlete. Nobody looks at Serena Williams and says, man, but, you know, she couldn't beat the 200 guy in tennis. Nobody really cares. It, could that be true? And actually that was proven. It doesn't matter. She's still looked at as a great and a legend when we see her because she is a great athlete. It doesn't matter that she's not necessarily the best to do it in that sport. That's not the point. We are still commending her. We're still saying she's great. We talk about the Candace Parkers of the world, the Kelsey Plums, the Lisa Leslie's. We talk about all of them and how great they are in their sports. It doesn't matter that we're not we're not comparing them to LeBron. We're not comparing them to Michael Jordan. Who cares about all that? They were great female athletes, and that's okay. But sometimes you hear this argument that women need to be on the exact same level as men. But that can't happen because even when it comes down to jobs, women aren't going to take certain jobs that are more dangerous that men would. And that's just the way it goes. But I, I, I don't see I don't see the problem with that. It's just that people in this world today want to live this life that they want their cake and they want to eat it, too. 
They want it all. And I think men are the same way. But right now we're talking about, you know, sports here and all that kind of stuff. Women, just some women and what has been taught to them is that you can have your cake and eat it too. You can be the top of the company. You can be the top of this, be the top of that and have a perfect family life and everything's going to go grand. And no matter what you do, you can be the best at everything. But even men understand that to be the top of your company, you're going to have to make sacrifices. There's going to be times that you can't spend with your wife. There's times you can't spend with your kids because you are constantly working, trying to get to the top of something. There is no balance to all of this stuff. There is a sacrifice. If you want to be a complete family man and have go to every one of your kids' sports events and all that kind of stuff, you're probably not going to move up in the company as fast as somebody who is not going to do all that, who's going to sacrifice time with his family and all that to get up in the company, maybe to make his family more financial wealth financially wealthy or maybe they have a greedy purpose behind it i don't know but there's a sacrifice in both ways nobody can have it all and that is what we're being taught and that's why we're seeing this happen in sports that you can be a boy you can grow up decide you want to be a female and be able to go dominate the women's sports and be able to have all the championships all the records and just have it all you you can you can be born a boy and suck at your sport right you can be a born a man Suck at your sport and boys and be like, ah, you could go over to the females and dominate them. You can have it all. You can have it all. No, you can't. All right. Sorry, that just thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Shannon, for the subscription. All right, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Goodbye.